Yo, what up, my people? It's your boy, David O, and you can catch me live on the Bootleg Camp Podcast. Keep it locked. One love. Bootleg Kev show. We got a special guest. A legend is in here, man. True. David O, welcome, sir. Well, wow, you said it perfect. Did I? Did I? Yeah. Do crazy. people usually fuck it up? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was a little confused. Like, like early on, I was like, is it David O? Is it... David O. Uh, yeah. It's David O. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Big fan of your show. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for yeah, having us. You're obviously a legend, man. I think when we think of like Afro beats, you're kind of like the Jay-Z of this shit, low-key, you know? Crazy. God yeah. is good. Yeah. What's it like to kind of see your sound that you've been doing for all these years become mm -hmm. like the sound now? You know, like, you know, I was born in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I've always been like coming to America, but like when I became a musician, especially like coming out here you know, for shows, trying to push the music. It really just started with, like, just, like, African fans coming to the shows. Right. You know, when we do shows out here. And then it started just, you know, spreading. You know, like, even when I was in college, mm -hmm. you know, I used to play my friends African music, and they liked it. Where'd you go to college? In Alabama. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Which, like, wait, which school? It's called Oakwood University. Okay. It's a... Uh, like so a, you were, hey, he was raised in the South, low-key. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fully. You know what I'm saying? So even when I used to play African songs for them, I knew that they liked it. So I always knew it was always, if there was an opportunity to be heard, you know, people, you know, fuck with it. You know what What's it like? Because uh, I feel like I don't, I, I didn't know that about you, that you were kind of, you're from Atlanta and you were, you went to college in Alabama. Yeah. That's like the Bible Belt for real. Crazy. Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville. Yeah. Young. I was like 16 years old in college. You know, HBCU. And that's coming like straight from Lagos. Right. You know, straight there. And I remember even just being in college and talking to like friends there. They're asking me like, oh, how so? How is it in Nigeria? Like, right. how did you get here? Y'all got airports? You know what I'm saying? Because they were not educated about it. About what's going on. Yeah, over yeah but yeah. now, you know, so you have social media. So it's different. They see a different side of Africa. When you when you tell people like, oh, I'm Nigerian. They're like, oh, I love Afrobeats. You feel me? Yeah. Like, 15 years ago, that was not the story, you know? What was like, so, for you, like, can you, can you kind of pinpoint in your opinion as somebody who, you know, obviously has a crib out here and went to school out here and was born here, can you kind of pinpoint the moment that you noticed, like, America starting to kind of take a, a liking to the genre? Mm, definitely, to me, from my experience, it started, like, from Atlanta. Two okay. cities, Atlanta and New York. Uh, mainly Atlanta, and like just like even going out, you know what I'm saying? Like, like one thing I knew one of my friends used to do. He used to he was a big baller. He would go to the club, and he like spent so much money. But he tell him every time, yo, when you bring my bottles out, I want to hear this song. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the DJ's playing it. You know what I'm saying? The bottles coming out to the song. You know, and the DJ is liking the music. Yeah. And then that's that was like one of my first experiences of like being in the club with and my hearing friend. it. Yeah. yeah, and then you know start growing. You know, once the girls like it, once the girls like it, it's over. It's over. You know what I'm saying? So even like girls being in the car with a with a with a guy, like yo, can you play some Afro beats? Like, alright, because you know girls like it. Right. You know, let's do it. It obviously became because it was like a big big thing in the UK first, right? No, it was from the UK. Yeah. Before it got to America. You know, UK was like the first place to acknowledge Afrobeats. Like, we started doing arenas in the UK first. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Afrobeats. UK actually named it Afrobeats. So that's like a UK It's like term. a UK term, but yeah. then, you know, we just ran with it. You feel me? That's fire, man. What, how much um, can you attribute to Drake embracing it to, to kind of it being like easily bridged to the US? Because I feel like once Drake gets behind anything, for mm -hmm. the most part, it can, it can really take off. I mean, there, there's this, there's always narratives like, oh, you know what I'm saying, Afrobeats was was definitely, you know what I'm saying, huge. It was huge, because if it wasn't huge, Drake, Drake wouldn't have fucked Yeah, it was already yeah. huge, like, before Drake, but, you know, Drake is Drake. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I'd be lying if I say, you know, say he didn't put some spotlight to, you know, Afrobeats, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, it was dope. He's made some dope, you know, records. You Yo, know, what, it, there's this, like, new trend where there's the normal version of a song and, the sped up. and then the sped up version back in the day i mean you're from the south you know there was this chopped and screwed yeah, shit the slower. screwed up shit back in the day shout out to texas mm -hmm. 
But now I feel like every single there's like the normal version, and then you got the sped Yo, up. Yo, that's version. crazy you said that because I released you know, the album is out, so we released a couple songs. Then we released the single again mm -hmm. with a sped up version. Yeah, there's a sped up version. Yeah, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know some songs. I, I didn't even know like some songs I see on like TikTok and stuff. You I don't be, even know the normal version. Yeah, I be thinking that's yeah. that's the original one. When I hear it, I'm like, oh, okay, makes sense now. I mean. Social media is crazy though. Like it's a different avenue. When I started music, we used to talk about radio, and you know, not now it's like podcast. If you're promoting me before, we're just promoting on like YouTube, and Facebook. Right now, you got like 20 apps. Yeah, yeah. That you know, you gotta do your promo. For. I know. I keep hoping that TikTok gets banned, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> it's like one less day, last day. I'm like, if TikTok gets banned, it just takes one more thing. I don't have to worry about away. <laughs> Yeah, it was going crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. Going crazy. Are you pretty big on TikTok? Um, I mean, I got a lot of followers, but I'm not like. Are you like on the app scrolling and like diving into the algorithm? Nah, nah, nah. Because nah, nah. it'll suck you in, bro. Yo, and every time I get on TikTok, I'll be there for like two hours. Like, yeah, because whatever you're deep, into, it knows. Yeah, different, and it's like everything's on there. Because I just love like dogs and food, so it just shows me pu and then puppies and food. And then it's crazy how. It, it can tell what you like yep. from just like being on the app after like a week. Yeah. Then it's like me, I like food. All those cooking. Yeah, just like guys who like cook in a minute and like, Shh. they're you like, see the guy, you see the guy that cooks outside with the dog? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah. I love that shit. That's what makes me and then I, got, I just bought a grill, like a griddle, like a little griddler thing outside. So like, I'm like, I'm always trying to find like shit to do on the grill. You see the guy that throws the butter on the thing? No. Oh, butter, pot and butter, babe. No. <laughs> Have a, you seen yeah. It? Yeah. His, yeah, his food be slapping. You ever see the uh, the guy who does the shark bite at the restaurants? Shark Bi bite, big groove. <laughs> yeah, I think he's African too. Funny enough, he might. I actually, I interviewed him. Um, I think he might be. I think so. Yeah. So the guy's just a m massive human being. Be huge, and he dances up, and he wears tight clothes. Very tight clothes. <laughs> You got to get him to do to do a dance to your song. Yeah, sure. um, how? Give me kind of like your come up because if you're in the stage, you're going to college here. How do how do you end up popping off? Do you go back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, just being in Alabama for like before I got to college, obviously I, I had a liking to music. Of course. But obviously, like you know, my father was just adamant about me going to school. Right. You know, I'm first generation entertainer in my family. You know, so saying? it's a little harder to convince your everybody's parents. business, business, business. Be business like, hey, I want to do this, and they're like, it was a normal template now. You right. know, what I'm saying you go to school, and then you go out and work for the family business. Right. And I'm the I'm the last kid of five, so it was already. I was not even thinking about you know convincing anybody. Or, right. So, you know, just being in school in Oakwood, Oakwood was apart from it, it's a church, it's a Christian school. Right. So apart from even like going to church, the choir, so there are lots of like musicians around the school. So the dude that lived like, that stayed like on top of me in the dorm, he was like a gospel singer, his name is Jamo. So I, I always used to hear like music, music upstairs, right. like, but I never went to check. So one day I just said, yo, let me go check. So I went to check and knocked his door and then he opens his room and it's a whole studio set up, like in the dorm. So I'm like, oh, So he's just recording this? himself? Yes. So I was like, that was like my first time like seeing like a laptop, interface. studio equipment, yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Yo, how much is all this?" And he told me, "I was like, yo, I want to buy it. Just teach me the way around it." So he was te he was teaching me, and I also like learned off YouTube, like how to mix and master. YouTube University, man. Mm -hmm. You can learn anything on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, um, what was your first interface? Was it like a it was like Scarlet? M Audio? M Audio. Oh, M Audio, the little yeah. M box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Just plug and play um, USB, and then I had um the uh, the what. It was, wasn't Pro Tools. It was Logic. Logic, yeah, yeah. A lot of people learn on Logic, mm -hmm. yeah. So from there, I just started recording myself, recording myself. But mind you, you know, like I said, it's school. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'd go home every December for right. Christmas. So one December, I go to the club. And it's like, you know, before, before I left in the club or on the radio in, in Nigeria, they play even mostly American music. Like what was popping in Nigeria when I left when you to left. school? Like Fifty Cent, of course. Yeah, they love him. There. I feel so, like the world loves Fifty. <laughs> Fifty is just like anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah, Usher. Mm -hmm. In our so that's like Confessions yeah, area. Nelly, you know, just then. But you know, I'd I'd you know noticed that when I got back, 
I thought, you know, I think I went, it was like two years away and I came back for Christmas. I was like, yo, it's all African music now, blah, blah. It's different. Yeah, I'm in the club. Like, I'm seeing, like, the artists blowing up, the girls going crazy. So I'm like, ah, yo, this is about to be something. You know what I'm saying? Right. Were you already making that kind of music in your dorm? Um, or were was, you trying to rap? Or what were you doing? Nah, you know, I actually started as an engineer. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you were just learning your way around Yeah, vocals. I used to record, like, my cousins. Gotcha. You know, and stuff like go to Atlanta, record them. So I actually started as an engineer. Um, so it was really like R&B-ish kind of music. Right. And African music sometimes. But then when I, after that trip... Changed it. Changed it. So when I got back, it was just African music. Like, I, after that trip, I decided, that's when I decided, like, I want to be a African musician. So the biggest artist at that time, his name was Debanj, right? So... Anytime, like, Nigerian artists, anytime they're coming to Atlanta, mm-hmm. they would always call me up, you know, hook them up, give them some E, right. you know what I'm saying? Set so you were up. the plug. Yeah, and I was like 15. <laughs> 15, just selling weed in Atlanta. No, I wasn't selling weed, though. I, just, <laughs> I knew where to get it. Yes, you like, know where to get it, of course. Yeah. yeah. You, know, I knew, you, were, you were the middleman. Yeah, I knew where to get it. So, you know, from there, you know what I'm saying, they came. So one trip, one of the biggest artists at that time came to... Um, America, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I took them out, you know, got them in hotels. Um, took them to the strip club. Which one? Uh, oh, damn. It was like some strip club on the south side. I think it's called Club Wax. It's like, okay. It's old. So not Magic City? No, nah, not Magic City. Okay. So I took them to that Club Wax, and yo, they changed like 20,000. In ones? Bro, that's like the most money I'd seen my, at yeah. that time. I'm like, what? Yo, these, these guys right. are really getting it. So at that point, I was like, yo... I'm not going back to school. I wanna. I wanna. I, I see that you can make some real money off yeah. this shit. And then from then I was like, yo, this is what I wanna do. Cause yeah. like it's gotta be kind of hard because you probably were like also semi influenced by a lot of what was going on in Atlanta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like it's kind of hard to like see outside of what's yeah. happening right in front of you. Yeah. So for you to go back home during the summer and be like, oh no, there's this whole other. Yeah, thing going on. There's you know, the, I'm saying like, there's a whole, there's another world outside of the I, U.S. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm, I don't want to miss this. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's when I like started getting involved in doing, I mean, like African music production, facing it the full way. It wasn't even affecting my academics. You know what I'm saying? So, so when'd I, you drop out? Uh, after like two years, I dropped out. Parents were happy, or they were no, like, you're crazy. they didn't know. They thought they even know I was dropped out. So you lied. They thought I was in school. Yep, for yeah. a year. You're like school's good. Yeah, everything's yeah, yeah. going great. So sending them fake grades on that. You know what I'm saying? But what in was the, the studio, first convo where you like let them know like? Hey. It was never a convo. Oh, okay. They just like saw you on TV you know one saying? day or my something. My dad, no. <laughs> so I, you know, he was calling my phone. Okay. And at this at this point, I've gotten back to America, but I was planning to go back to Nigeria to start my music career. Cause like I had met people already and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So um, my sister hit me up on Facebook. She's like, I think my dad was like trying to call my phone. Then he called the school, like trying to reach me. And they're like, Oh, uh, Doctor Adeleke, sorry, David hasn't hasn't been in the road here for the past year. So he's like, What? What? Then my sister, I will never forget that message. I was eating a burger, bro. Like, she like, Dad knows you haven't been in school. <laughs> My stomach. Oh, fucking fuck your whole vibe Bruh, up. Everything was just. Like, <laughs> your dad's a doctor? No, no, he, but he got a, like a doctor. He's got a doctor. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. He's, um, he's not, not a doctor. Yo, what up? It's Bootleg Kev. We got to stop the interview to tell you about our folks at MyBookie. That's right. So many ways you can gamble with MyBookie right now, man. Of course, you got NBA playoffs, Western Conference Finals, Eastern Conference Finals. They're set. I love Celtics versus Lakers in the finals, all right? You can sign up at mybookie.ag right now using that promo code BOOTLEG and get a very generous first deposit bonus. That's right. And they just got the craziest, like, revamp of the online casino. It's like a Las Vegas experience. If you play cards, blackjack, roulette, uh, you shoot dice, whatever it is, they have, like, live dealers handling it for you wherever you're at. You could be at the airport and be playing fucking roulette on your phone. It's amazing. MyBookie.ag. Sign up with that promo code BOOTLEG. Right now, you can bet on sports. You could do slots. You could do blackjack, uh, craps, whatever you're into. MyBookie.ag. Promo code BOOTLEG for that first deposit bonus, and it is a generous one. Also got to give a shout-out to our family at... King Palms. Shout out to King Palm, man. If y'all ain't know about King Palms, they're our new sponsor on the Bootleg Kept Podcast. And they got such a great product. The best thing about King Palms is it's all organic, man. No tobacco. 
in these wraps. They're straight leaves. And the best thing uh, about them is they got this uh, product. They're flavor terpene tips. All right. You stuff them with your, with your product. Do we got one here? Oh, we do got one here. We got one right here. We got one right here. All right. You stuff this with your uh, premium cannabis from Hardeen Las Vegas. All right. You smoke up. Pinch that tip. You're going to get a burst of flavor. Yeah, this is the energy drink flavor. We got peach pineapple. We got watermelon wave. Also, don't forget the goddamn blue grapes. You know what I mean? And also, this is a tobacco-free wrap. It's totally organic. It's literally a leaf. Let me show you what I mean. That is just a big-ass leaf, guys. All right? So what you could do is go to kingpalm.com. Weed's flying everywhere. Kingpalm.com. Promo code bootleg. And uh, you can get 50% off of whatever you order at kingpalm.com. And don't forget to check them out because they're everywhere. Your local smoke shop, your local uh, liquor store, 7-Eleven, Smoke the King Palm. All right? It's organic. It ain't like all that other bullshit y'all be fucking stuffing in your lungs, man. All right? Shout out to King Palm, kingpalm.com, promo code bootleg right now. And it's actually promo code bootleg Kev. Promo code bootleg Kev. Not bootleg. Bootleg Kev. Kingpalm.com. Half off everything. Let's get back to the interview. I mean, technically, he's a doctor. He got well, a doctor. Like, ah. so after that, and then my dad, like, I like, I hate to see him disappointed in me. Like, it could mess up my whole vibe. For sure. Start. So I was like, man, I'm not going home. I ain't even trying to hear all. Like, where do I start from? Yeah. Like, how, where do I start from? You know, can you understand? So I was like, man, I got to blow up. That's the only way he's going to forgive me. <laughs> so you, did you wait to, like, really? Oh, yeah. To, like, I, I waited someone. No, no. He, well, kind of. I was like about to blow up and then he kind of caught me, kind of. Because I ran, I kind of dipped. So he was looking for me for months and I was like... <laughs> You're just on the run from your like dad. 16. I was like 16 at this time. 16 on the run. Not on the run, but... you know. Well, so you're on the run from your, from your pops, yeah. for sure. And then I went to London for like six months and then my friend had a studio yeah. in his house. You're 16 at the time? Yeah. Jesus. 16. So you oh. kind of ran away, low-key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in my friend's house recording you know what I'm saying he had a studio in London yeah so I, I recorded like 10 songs right so I had him with me you know what I'm saying at least I have content from whenever I'm ready to drop so after being in London for like it's me and my cousin Beard that we, we both ran away so it's like after being in London for like 6 months you like, got a fake ID at the time so nah, I wasn't even places? going to no club. Or, okay, I, got it, yeah. I was just in my friend's house. Right. But, you know, I had an American passport. Yeah. So I just, you know what I'm saying? Which is good money wherever you're at. Come on, anyway. Yeah. Um, so after like six months, I was like, yo, I had the 10 songs. I had saved up a little paper. I was like, yo, I'm going to Nigeria, you know, to start my career. Right. You know what I'm saying? Get on the plane, land. And then like my dad like caught me. Mm. Oh, shit. As soon as I got off the plane. He was like, waiting for you in Nigeria. Yeah, the immigration. He was living in Nigeria. Like the army immigration people just grabbed me off the plane and took me straight to him. I'm shook, like, boy. I got an eye piercing, um, lip piercing. <laughs> um, he's not fucking with you. Do you have to stop me? Like, yeah. he's looking at me crazy. He's like, what happened to my yeah. son? <laughs> so we get in the car, and I forget, he hugged me. Bah. He's like, hey, where were you, brother? I was like, man, daddy, I don't want to hear anything. I just want to do music. Do you understand? I don't need anything from you. Then we get home. And the whole time I ran away, my dad, like, cut everybody off. Like, he the honcho. He right. take care of everybody. So he's like, go and get my son. Or no, you no, get free, my son. no freebies yeah. or nobody. So yeah. everybody messaging me, like, boy, you better come back home. I'm hungry. Yeah, you, you got us fucked up out here. I swear, everybody <laughs> cuts everybody off, like, down to, like, my aunties. Yo, your dad sounds like a G. No, he's a mafia. So <laughs> I, go, I get back home, and then I have my 10 songs. You know right. what I'm saying? So I'm just like, yo, I want to do music. So I'm telling my siblings. And then my dad was just like, look, you know what I'm saying? You could you could have just came and told me. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this is really what you want to do. Right. I was like, Dad, I told you like 10 times. Yeah, and you were like, nah, finish yeah. school. So so he, he so I ended up like cutting a deal. He was like, he with was like, mafia. he wants me to he won't hear with him. <laughs> so he's like, um, so you gotta go to school. I said, okay, well, but what's it in for me? He said, I mean, he'll build me a studio. I was like, mm -hmm. And give me some paper to like start off my career. So he helped you out. But, yeah, he did. So I had to go to school for like every two weeks. I had to be in school. Well, he shipped me like four hours away. Oh shit! You know what I'm saying? Four what hours was away. what so, was the song that changed your life? Um, 
Probably like, my second single. It's called Dami Duro, right? Um, so that's when like I left school. I was like, cause I was on. Cause you were like, look, it worked. I don't got to do yes, this shit. Like, no yeah, more. the first single was alright. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the second one, I was in school, so I, I was only allowed to go to the city every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'd be in school for like 13 days. Four hours away. Yeah, 13 days, and then on the fourth, 14th day, I can go to the city for just three days to do music Let's Go try shows, to break your record. Stuff like yeah. that. So, and I'm in school. My dad put me next to like the owner of the school. Like, I'm not oh, even so like he's like a, He's like really like... Like he's this, got eyes on you. This is the door of the school owner, yeah. and this is my room. So every day he go to work, he knocking on the door like, "Hey, you in there? Are you going to class?" You know, stuff, yeah. stuff like that. But when I had that second record, my boy called me. He was in the city. He said, "He said it's lit." I said, "What you mean?" He said he was in the club last night. He played the record. Everybody went crazy. I said, "Are you sure?" Because if I leave this place, I'm fucked. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I'm almost, I don't know. I never forget. So I made like a fake body in my room, like under the covers. Yeah. You, oh, I've done yes. that. Yeah. You put. You know how to do it, right? You put pants. Yeah, you you stuff the jeans the with pants, stuff shirts. The jeans, and, stuff the shirts. Yeah. I covered it. Just did like that. Yeah. Dipped. He was called on the way to um, the four hours trip. He called him. I phone like, where are you? What, what, what is this? I said, man, uh, I'm out. I'm out. So that night we got to the city, and this this is like my first time seeing like any fame or any feeling type right. of any importance of my music. I walked in the club, boy. They knew who you were. Boy. I was like, I was thinking about that. I was like, yo. <laughs> so like, and I was like, that's like I'm 17. So that record was like too big. Like it blew up the whole yeah. country, the whole Africa. Like it was like really like literally overnight success. Crazy. Do you understand? Like we all confused like. Like, we're not even prepared for what came. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, damn. Now I got to get PR. I got to get a publicist. Yeah. I got to get a tour manager. I got to get, you know what I'm saying, this, that. You know what I'm saying? And from there, it was just on. What's the clubs like? Because I've heard that the clubs in Nigeria are crazy. Wow. But, like, you've been to both. The Atlanta mm. side. And so, for you, like... In what, America, they don't dance. Yeah, I was about to say, that's the one thing about ah, here. It's like Nigeria people pop dancing, bottles and they stare sweating. at each other. When Nigeria were dancing, sweating... To like 10 a.m. Just everyone's dancing. Happy, smiling, crazy bottles, everything. What about, are there strip clubs in Nigeria? Yeah. What are the strip club vibes like compared to? It's just like here. It's yeah, just like here. Same thing. And funny enough, a lot of like dancers fly from America to, to go, Nigeria to, to work. To go dance out yeah, there. Yeah, to go dance out there. Oh, that's fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got the new project out. Timeless. Uh, for people who don't know, man, I, I, are you very like aware of like your place in like Afrobeats history when people bring up the big three I think it's like you Wiz Kid and Burna Boy yeah um definitely now like definitely away just especially like do you understand once you remember when I told you that I was like an out I was an outsider looking in when I went for December right and I saw the arts you know when artists everybody was like in one section yeah chilling, of course yeah and I'm just looking like I gotta get in this I gotta you know, get in the I mix I gotta get in the mix but I also like came with like a vision. Do you understand? And I feel like that's what helped me solidify my place in Afrobeats. Do you understand? Came with a vision. I knew what I wanted. Do you understand? Um, I'm a producer as well. So multi talented. With, with the production, I already knew how I want everything to sound. Do you understand? Um and from there and then, you know, shout out to my pops. You know what I'm saying? He shot my first video. Your dad shot your first video? No, I mean, he paid. Oh, he paid for it. Okay, I was about to say, your dad is talented. He's got a doctorate. He's out here shooting videos. You know what I'm saying? So he shot my first video. So, you know, from then, I kind of like, you know, got, you know, okay to, you know, continue the journey. And, you know, coming out here, it was very important for me to come out here and, you know, especially for when, when I did my first tour. I used to live in America. Yeah. So it was, it was very important for me to figure out I know that if we get to be listened, how do we, do you understand, know like it's already popping in the clubs. <clears throat> and then before you know it, a major label hit me up. Boom, Sony, you know what I'm saying? And this is, I've been doing music already for like seven years. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, we like, we like 60 records in at this time. Wow. 60 records in, but the old records is just... Starting to catch. Starting to catch. Yeah. So like, no, actually, I feel like that's what has uh, been happening with a lot of that. So it was very stuff. difficult for us 
you know, artists because we're so com- we're so comfortable already. You know what I'm saying? At that time, I was already making at least one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a show. Jesus. And then we have like that's dead. And then we already setting out uh, um, stadiums. You know what I'm saying? Fifty thousand people. And then you know, there's the other side of things. But you want the music to the culture to push it. You come out here, and it's and like the money ain't the same. Again. No, definitely. No, now it is. It is now. Yeah. But, but like back then, then like no, you got to kind of start not, from scratch again, right? Definitely not. Like I, my first show, my first show, I think it was in New York. It was in like Irving Plaza, I think. Something like that. It was like a thousand people. And and you're like, I'm used to doing like 50 yeah, but over like, there. But, you know, that's how, you know, spreading the music, waking up for interviews. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Doing promo. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, when the major labels got involved with Afrobeats, I felt like, we had the music, but we didn't have the structure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, there's a little bit of structure. All the labels right now in Nigeria. Do you understand? So. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, like, uh, shout out to my guy Ghazi. I think uh, Empire's doing shout a lot Shout out to Ghazi. Over there. A lot. Yeah, a lot of artists. Sony, a lot of artists under Sony as well, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who who would you kind of consider to be like your OGs in, in this shit? Because I feel like we always hear about you, Burner Boy, and Wiz Kid, but yeah. there's a whole generation of guys mm-hmm. prior to you guys that kind of laid the groundwork, right? Um, I think definitely the bunch. You know, that's one of the artists I, I saw. Yep. That I was told you I was looking. The bunch, Two Face. So the big three then was the bunch, Two Face, and it's a group. It's twins called P Square. So that was th- th- those were like our OGs. You know, then those are the people that made me say. <laughs> It's possible. I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm doing this. You also have kind of became one of the, like, the main guys that like hip-hop artists will tap into if they need yeah, a verse yeah, or yeah. a hook. I mean, you've worked with guys like Fabulous and go on and on. Who are some of the... Well, first of all, being as a, a, a guy who went to college here, was born in Atlanta, has there been a hip-hop artist you've worked with where you were like, damn, that's crazy. I got a record with this guy. Like, this is um, crazy. Definitely. Definitely. It should be. Oh, I think... Well, I mean, I have a lot of you know records. I did. I have one with Meek, but one of the records I was like, "Yo, it was Nas." Ooh. When I got that Nas verse in Hit Boy Studio, like those one of the moments because my brother, my you guys brother, met him at Hit Boy st- Spot yes. Chalice. Yeah, yeah. We, he just came in the room. I was like, "What, ah, Nas? What?" He was like, "Yeah, man. Like he likes African music." I was like, "Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you." He was like, "Oh, what you working on?" And he just laid the verse, and me and my boys just looking because that was special to me because my oldest brother, Nick, he was a big. Nas fan, like right. that Illmatic album, still, I mean, yeah, still yeah. Matic. Of course, Nas. The is album dope. When, when he was young, mm-hmm. his face. Yeah, Illmatic, it's right there. It's behind that box. Yeah. Oh wow, you see, yeah. Yeah. that's crazy. So that was like crazy to me, and then obviously like with Thug, you know, yeah. Baby, all that it was real dope. And you know, we connect, kind of vibe. You know, what I'm saying. Did like, you ended I, up connecting and, and like really vibing with Thug. Yes. Oh, like not even on music tip. You know, what I'm saying Thug is. Thug's a great guy, man. I actually met Lil Baby through Thug before Lil Baby even dropped a, a record. Oh, really? So yeah. back in the day. Mm-hmm. People don't understand, like, Young Thug and Gucci are, like, two of the best A&Rs ever. Crazy. They just always have, like, just talent around them. Like, and-, and we all we'll all be in the studio. And you know when, like, when you're, like, in the studio and everybody's, like, playing their music? Yeah. Everybody passing the ox chord. When I put, I play mine, they always loved it. So I always knew that, man, this genre is going to go. It's going to go. Got to stop the interview real quick to tell you about our family at Blue Chew, baby. That's right. It's getting hot outside. You know what that means, fellas? You're about to go get that dick wet. You know what I'm saying? It might as well be really hard. It might as well be as hard as it could possibly be. And with Blue Chew, you will achieve such hardness. All right? (laughs) It's seriously amazing. Uh, And the best part about Blue Chew is you can find out if it works. Don't just take my word for it. They're going to give you a month's supply for free. Go to BlueChew.com. Use that promo code BOOTLEG. Get a month's supply for free. BlueChew.com, promo code BOOTLEG. Now, it's the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis, minus the awkward doctor appointment. You do not have to go see some old dude and tell him about your erectile dysfunction issues in person, because that's a fucking awkward conversation, bruh. All you got to do is go to BlueChew.com right now. Use the promo code BOOTLEG. They're going to get you hooked up with a month of supply for free. You just got to pay $5 in shipping. No awkward doctor's appointments. Same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis. Plus, they got the Blue Chew Mint. It's a chewable. It's great. Tastes like mint. It's also the same active ingredient as Levitra. So 
Summertime's coming, fellas. You don't want to underperform. Make sure your dick is rocked up, baby. All right? Go to bluechew.com. Use the promo code bootleg. <laughs> hey, man, it works. What do you want from me? It fucking works. Everyone should have a little blue chew in case of an emergency. You might have an emergency. You need to pop a blue chew. Chew it. It's a chewable. You know what I mean? Anyway, also got a shout out to our family at Odd Socks. Don't forget, go to oddsocksofficial.com, promo code bootleg, save 20% off. Man, they got the underwear that they just dropped uh, last year that's amazing. So not only do you get the most comfortable socks in the world, but you can also get the most comfortable draws in the world, all the crazy licenses. They got half-baked socks. They just announced their Hasbro collection which is crazy because that means you're going to get Monopoly socks, Transformer socks, Power Ranger socks, so much shit going with Odd Socks. Plus, they got the Odd Socks Basics, my favorite. This is what I wear every day. I wear the Basics because they're the most comfortable socks I've ever put on my fucking feet. So experience the most comfortable socks in the world with me. OddSocksOfficial.com, promo code bootleg. Save 20% off. Shout out to Odd Socks. Let's get back to the interview. Yeah, that's got. What was did, when you guys worked together? Did he record the verse with you there? Yes, because yeah. I heard his process is pretty crazy. Yeah, he, um, Thug did it, but baby, I sent I sent baby this all. Because like this, Thug don't write nothing down, right? It's just does he lay the uh, straight? He did. lays he lays the melody first and then punches in, or punches in, and then go back, punch in, go back, do the melody. Then you you know you get the words, then you record it, you know. Kind of, I kind of record the same way too. So you're you're kind of similar. Well, yeah. you'll, you'll lay a melody down and then fill in the lyrics. Melody and then fill in the lyrics. Um, yeah. You used to be an engineer. Yeah. Which way do you prefer to record an artist? Because I do know some engineers that get frustrated. We're like, yeah, yeah, punch me in. Back, 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 back. No, no, right there. Me, punch me in. Punch me in. Think about me. You got to be quick because I get anxiety when you know when if you have an engineer recording you. They got to be fast. Yeah, you okay. have to be very, very quick. And I don't sleep, so it's like, you got to be quick, quick, quick. Because you know, when you want to, you know, lay down an idea, you know, first of all, you don't want to lose it. Right. Because sometimes it never comes back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I like to be kind of quick. Yeah. For you, uh, how much, how much, like, of your own production are you doing these days? None, actually. None. Yeah. Recently. But um, with this last album, um, I, like, I supervise the pro production. You right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not as hands-on as... You know, I was, you know, years back. Um, what is like for you, give me two or three artists that are on the come up right now that we should be checking out in the States. Like, like African artists. Yeah, right? African um, artists, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say, but they big already. See what you say on the come up. Well, I'm like, I mean, shit, maybe here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Definitely Ashake. Okay. Um, he's he's hot right now. I'm going crazy. Rema. Rema's got a smash. Yeah. I think top, Rema's got a num five. number the one. Highest, the, yeah, the highest yeah. ever. A number one song right now. Is it I have Rhythm one? Radio in okay. the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. With Selena. It's crazy. Um, Ashake, Rema, Buju. I've heard, I've heard of Buju. Yeah. Buju, so Rema's, uh, who's on the remix of that song? Selena, Selena Gomez. Gomez. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Buju, Zinolinski, um, Kiss Daniel. A lot of people, man. I can I can name a hundred females. You know, we got Thames, we got Ira Star, we got Tiwa Savage. So yeah, we doing great. Do you ever like uh, see American artists trying to do what you guys do? And it it, it comes. It, I've seen a lot of guys do okay. it, and it's very corny. Yeah. But do you ever like feel like? Like it's a little kind of appropriating like y'all's vibe because it does feel like I've seen. I mean, I don't want to say names, but yeah. there's been a few guys who've like just blatantly just. Yeah. I mean, like I, they don't I, care about the culture. They're yeah, just like, this is the sound. Let me make the song. It. You know. I mean, I don't feel like offended by it, like because I'm from both worlds. Right. But it'd be like kind of weird when when we have like a session, and like, and they come and they're like, yo. Can you make it sound like that? Uh, so I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Like, they, can you make it sound like this? Or can you? You've had that happen. Yeah, plenty of times. Do so you I'm like pull like, the guy to the side and be like, "Hey, man, like, you got to appreciate what we're uh -huh, doing here a little bit. Uh -huh. This ain't some microwavable shit." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'm just happy like the narrative is changing, mm -hmm. and I've been in the studio. I've worked with so many people, and then you know what I'm saying like before, it was like a thing to have like American artists on your record. It'd be like a big deal. A big deal. Now it's kind of but the other way around. For it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't want to mention names, but you know what I'm saying. You can be in the studio vibing out with somebody. Somebody do a verse. The next day they send you papers and an invoice. To You'd be like, yo, I thought like, we're boys. Yeah, I thought like, well, this was some that you know. Yeah, and, and, and the video, you gotta do that too. And you feel like it's the other way around now. What's up, nigga? I'm charging now. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, you need? I'm charging now. I'm sending my lawyers. What's the feature cost? Right now, shit. 
It's timeless. Six figures? Nah, nah, hundred, hundred, hundred. If I if I know you, 100. if you if I know you, that's the <laughs> <a good> price. <laughs> If I know you're 100. And that's then, not bad. And then the video. and then The video that. cost, that's one thing. Like, Lawyer you know, costs, like, there's a few costs. guys who, like, I feel like. But I, to be honest, if I know that, if you do a record and I know that we, you're going to push it right. to, the fullest, to the fullest and you're an artist that I enjoy. Like, like if you're a fan of somebody. I'm a fan. Like, me and Chris, every time we get in the studio, like, I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Because Chris is... Doing a video with you, Chris is bring you out on tour. He's the best. Chris is thinking of ideas, things. and he's also like our our Michael Jackson. Yes, so. <laughs> like I think Chris Brown's like he's an alien. For you, because uh, I do I do feel like there has been a few artists who have kind of like embraced. Like I, I know when Casanova, Free Casanova came to Nigeria, he went to Nigeria, shot yeah. the video, felt like he just died. Little baby you know I mean? came to he stayed in my house when he came to Nigeria. Little baby came. Little baby was at the crib. Yeah, he stayed at mine's. Um, the Migos came out there. A lot of people come out there for shows. Yeah. I'm curious, like, is the breaking an artist process, how much different is it than here? Because here it's like, obviously there's TikTok now, but, you know, traditionally in hip hop, you would want to maybe catch a wave in a strip club yeah. first or, you know, there might I be. I mean, now, from like my generation, it was like, you had to really like print out like a thousand CDs, go around and, and shame them out in the club. But now, like, sh sh shit is different. You can be sitting somewhere in the village, you drop a record. Once one thing goes viral and you it's own, over, you know what I'm saying? So stuff is different now. Like even when we in the studio now, we thinking like, yo, how can we make a challenge to the song? Like, like how we get this shit popping on TikTok? Yeah, so. And then out there is Audio Max really big. Audio, I think Audio Max, yeah, because, you know, it's easy to, um, it's easier, it's to like, subscribe. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? But recently Spotify Nigeria has popping. recently come to Nigeria and that's helped a lot too. Who would you want to do a collab project with from the States if you could do a collab album with anybody? Definitely Chris. That'd be crazy. Definitely, Chris. We, me and Chris got like 10 songs that like people ain't heard. 10 that are just on a hard drive? Yeah. Have you guys talked about doing that? He did a Thug album. Definitely, not, definitely. Um, I go to his house after here too. But yeah, me and Chris definitely, you know what I'm saying? We, I was even meant to go on tour with him. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to do a lot together. Who else? Um, I do a record with SZA. She SZA dope. be crazy. SZA be really, really dope. I'm looking for Bad Bunny too, man. There is such a, a <laughs> correlation between like reggaeton and Afro beats because one, it's just great dancing music. Mm. And I feel like BPM wise, <laughs> like BPM wise, they match up so well if you're DJing in the club. Yeah. So have you done like any shows with any like any like big reggaeton artists anywhere? Um, No, not really. But I, I, I had a show in Puerto Rico though. Yeah. Crazy? Oh, crazy. I remember on the flight down, Max, my manager, like, I was like, are you sure it's going to be. Yo, what? It was like 20,000 people there. In Puerto Rico? Yeah. Shit. Puerto Rico. I, we've had um, Mexico reach out to, um, but I love performing on, in the islands. All right, bet. Like, What's your favorite place to perform so far? I, um, like so could... far, that was real dope. I say the Bahamas. The Bahamas? Went crazy. Do you ever go to that crazy resort they got there, the Atlantis Resort that nah, I always nah, see it nah. online? We, we would like in and out. Oh, you in and out records. Mm. <laughs> in and out records. Well, look, man, the new album's out right now. Timeless. You know what I'm saying? Going crazy. Um, Anything crazy. else on the way? Um, definitely. We're going on tour in July. If you can. You Everywhere? Should, um, nah, we, we do. We splitting it up. So we do. I want to see. I want to go to. A, I want to go to a show that's not in the United States. I want to go to like. So come to. Come to Nigeria. I got to go to Nigeria. Puerto Rico, Rob. What's up? Are we going to Nigeria? Yep. We're going to get the December, green light? December. December? We end that I swim with. Let's go. So the, the, the best time to come, definitely, you know, in December. You know what I'm saying? You should also visit, visit Ghana, too. Um, I heard Ghana's amazing. Ghana is dope. So Nigeria is like New York. Right. And Ghana is like LA. Ah. It's like okay. calmer. So Nigeria is like fast paced. Bro, you got to be sharp. Yeah. If you can't survive in Nigeria, you can't survive anywhere. Ghana's more relaxed. Ghana kick is back. more, yeah, kick back. You want to... Don't kick back too much in LA, though. They'll rob your ass out here. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> do you guys... Listen, do Africans claim Elon Musk? Because he is South African. I'm just wondering. Is it? He's from... Yeah, he's yeah from, but look, Caucasians are from South African. He's from South Africa. That's crazy. He's got like kind of so like that. South Africa, a lot of, you know, Caucasians are down there. You right. know what I'm saying? Because um, you know, they stayed after. So it's yeah. dope. So South Africa. South Africa looks like LA. It's like beautiful. Like Is it? That yeah. Isn't it like very still kind of like separated and like a lot of the social yeah, issues yeah, are there's fucked some up like, there? Yeah, like there's some yeah, it'd be weird. It'd be like weird. some Jim Crow type shit going yeah. on there. 
they're like two languages. I know there's like one language called Afrikaans. Right. And like it's weird. Like I think I'm not sure it's not hundred percent, but I think like the black people don't speak that language. That's wild, man. Well listen, I appreciate you pulling up. You're Thank definitely you. a legend, man. It's dope to have you here. Uh new album out. New album out, timeless, Tour unavailable. On Tour on the way. I got a festival in Atlanta in November. Oh shit. Yes, I plan to do it yearly. It's called a Way Fest. Who um, else performing? Uh, I'm trying to bring all okay, these, you're bringing everybody, everybody through. I'm yeah. trying to bring everybody through and have like our own, our own Coachella we can do every year. Yeah, I just saw there's a, a big uh, Afrobeats festival yes, in, in New Mi York, I think. It's Miami. The next one's going to be Miami. Okay, yes, yeah. Yes. That's what's up. I Afro appreciate Nation. you. Man. Yeah, Thank Afro you. Nation. My brother, appreciate you, man. Let's go. David O. Hey, we got to wrap up an interview brought to you by Hardeen Las Vegas. Appreciate y'all watching. Hey, don't forget, when you go to Vegas, you got to go to Hardeen, man. It's the craziest dispensary you'll ever walk into. It smells like fucking heaven in there. All right? Get in that Uber. When you hit Sin City, tell them, take me to Hardeen. They're going to take you. You're going to get a wild selection of the just top, top of the line cannabis. The best selection you'll go uh, uh, be able to see in the U.S. Plus, on top of that, they got the crazy gear. They got the clothes. They got the bikinis. They got a wonderful selection of bud tenders that are very good at their job, man. They'll take care of you. Tell them that Bootleg Kev sent you. The bud tenders are Hardeen. They'll know what that means. They're going to get you hooked up right. All right, go follow them online, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas, or just go check out their website too, man, HardeenLasVegas.com. And when you're in Vegas, pull up to Hardeen or you're playing yourself, for real.